Hello and welcome to Swapping Joysticks. Uh, this is an amazing uh, thing that's going on behind me that I'm not sure quite what's going on there, oh, but I'm. What I've, have you done there? The galaxy has, <laughs> uh, has broken. I'm not sure, but uh, whatever's happening, I don't know. But welcome. I am uh, Biggest Benos, aka Ben. Well, not aka, because that is actually my name, uh, Ben Ostwick. And I'm joined, as always, by the one, the only, Ed Nightingale. Hello. 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 How are hey, you doing? Dan. Well, how are you doing? I'll, I'll do. I'll do. Uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's it's a really hot evening here. Yeah. Um, it is warm. But yeah, doing well. It's been it's been a good week. Mm. What uh, what have you been up to? Uh, Without well, this, I don't. I, you know what? Should we should we just bring someone else on and find out instead? Because I think that'd be more interesting. Oh, is my week not interesting enough for you? Is it's that not. What you're saying? It's not. <laughs> We wow. are joined uh, by the one, the only, somebody who I have wanted to have on this podcast for so, so long. It's Kelly Hansen from Annapurna Interactive. Hello, Kelsey. How are you doing? Hello. How are you? I told hey, you uh, this that intro will be short. I was like, wait a minute, I'm asking, <laughs> I'm asking Ed questions. I need to, uh, like, no, let's just go straight in. Bring I'm not guess. muted, right? You can hear me? Yeah, we can. We can. Okay, good. <laughs> Oh yeah! Uh, hello, I'm so excited to be here. I've never met you in person, and I still haven't. But this is the first time we're actually like speaking. This is like the halfway point, and then I mean, one day, who knows? In a, you know, non too distant future, we'll turn up at a gaming event or whatever. Okay. I know. I like. I could have met you when I because I was in Scotland for a full yes. month earlier this year, but I didn't end up going to, to London. That was right. Yeah, the gaming awards. Oh, I know. I was, I was just there for fun. I was there because I love Scotland so much, but mm. I, yeah, I just ended up staying in Scotland. I didn't even oh. go outside of Scotland. Where is Scotland? Whereabouts in Scotland? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, so I, <laughs> yeah, so I was in Edinburgh, like that's where my Airbnb was and I was based there. I've been there like a few times before this, but this was the first time when I was there for like a big chunk of time. So I was in Edinburgh and then uh, we went to Inverness, St. Andrews, we went to Balakulish um Glasgow we went to what is it Innerleithen because we stayed at this like house that was built in the 1400s and yeah it was amazing I love that place so much I wish I could move there <laughs> Edinburgh is lovely it's, it's absolutely so lovely. beautiful yeah. and I was walking like 30,000 steps a day like in LA that's wow that's just not a thing that happens yeah and it's hilly as well and all those cobbled mm -hmm. streets like that's not good for your feet <laughs> no and you also like you dress like you dress like it's going to be cold out and then you start walking and up and down these hills and then you're sweating by the time you're like halfway <laughs> to your destination oh, yeah exactly. i really yeah. want to go to edinburgh i've never actually oh, i've been to scotland once and that was just to visit uh, a university which i didn't end up going but all i remember was like sideways rain like it was so yes. windy and so rainy that it was yeah horizontal rain. Yeah, you can't use umbrellas. Yeah, it's impossible. You just get slapped in the face with this pelting <laughs> rain. <laughs> oh, it was the same. In, I used to live in Cardiff, and like I remember having like three umbrellas in about in the space of two weeks, and I was like, you know, you either have to buy a really expensive one or just just you know get a jacket with a hood. Oh. That's probably best. Yeah, and like a face mask or something. I'd love to go to uh, Edinburgh though. Oh, but great. Do you, do you have like uh, Scottish roots? Do you? No, no, I wish. Oh, <laughs> I know. I truly wish. Uh, no, I have wanted to live there since I was like 18. It's been like my, my dream. And, um, I don't know if you know, but visas are so hard to get. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that's like a foreign concept, yeah. but yeah, they're impossible. So for now I'll just go and visit as much as I can. Hmm. Yeah, I've, we've got one of the mods, uh, Games Mistress, in the chat. Is uh, <laughs> yeah, she is marrying a lovely lady here in the UK, and she's from Canada, and she's had to go back to Canada for quite a while to until they sort the visas out. <laughs> oh, it's a nightmare. Mm. I've just heard it from like people. I've never had to do it. I did live in Europe most of my life, but I Ooh. had nothing to do with the visa situation. I was too young, so nice. Yeah, the um. Yeah, unfortunately, now we don't have a functioning government, so it's going to be even uh, even longer. Neither do we. It's amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. Uh, where, where in Europe did you used to live? 
I was in. Well, I was born in Finland in Helsinki. Whoa. Um, and then I lived in the Netherlands in Arnhem for three years, and I went to a Dutch school. And then I was in Germany in Stuttgart for nine years, and I graduated high school there. Wow. Yeah. I so no I moved idea. to wow. yeah. moved to the states when I was eighteen. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's I- amazing. I've got, we've got quite a few uh, Finnish students at school and one of them was wearing a t-shirt the other day. It was something like, I'm not sad or depressed. I'm just Finnish. It says on the <laughs> screen <laughs> and it was like such a good t-shirt. That is so good. I don't remember anything about Finland. I moved away when I was two. Oh, okay. So I have no idea, but my dad always talks about how much he loved it there. And my mom has like stories of doing these like races these like 5ks but at the end of it you would chug a beer run into the sauna and then jump into the snowbank and that was like a <laughs> tradition that they would do in finland Perfect. and i was like wow i don't know what that's like <laughs> how many languages do you speak then one okay fine i used to be fluent in dutch i was fluent in dutch from the ages of like 7 to 12 Um, and then I moved to Germany and I went to an international school and I lost a lot of my Dutch, but I'm able to speak like conversational German. I can understand Dutch pretty well and I can understand German very well. Um, but I'm just not fluent in any of them anymore, which is really sad. Yeah. It's really sad when you move away somewhere or or you stop studying a language and you just lose it completely. Like I studied French for years at school and I barely know any of it anymore. And I was practically fluent at one point. It's so disappointing. Yeah, my I think Dutch is like my favorite language of all time. I think it like it's the most cheerful sounding language when especially when you're there. And I was really sad to lose it. And I when I I went to Michigan State University and I was like maybe I'll just do a course in Dutch to try to like get my Dutch back up. And they didn't offer Dutch as a language. They offered like Swahili, like they offered all these languages oh, no wow. Dutch. And I was like this is very <laughs> odd to me, but okay. It's weird because yeah, I, I was it. Yeah, we have quite a few Dutch students and every single Dutch student we have is in like the highest level class that we've got because their English is just incredible. Yeah, I'm looking forward to. Yeah, we're actually going to the Netherlands next Friday, taking the train. Wait, oh, Amsterdam, right? Yes. Yeah. I've never been to Amsterdam. Me neither. I've never been to the Netherlands, actually. Ah. Oh, my gosh. You're going to love mm. it. Yeah. I was, I'm beating both of you. I've been to Amsterdam twice. Oh, well, someday. Do you remember it? <laughs> someday. <laughs> Yes, I, I was not stoned the whole time. Okay, okay. I, wasn't, I, was, I, was just, I don't I want to generalize. You're implying. <laughs> Only a partial brownout. That's yeah. it. Yeah, we, we watched, um, well, I, I basically had a panic attack because I was not good at taking it. And then, um, and kind of floated next to the, uh, next to the canal, thinking I was going to fall when I was nowhere near it, <laughs> gripping my friend, like, I'm going to fall the canal. He's like, Ed, you're like, three meters you're away, fine, fine. <laughs> um and then we just sat in the hotel room and watched um holland's got talent and mm-hmm. holland did not have talent <laughs> oh man just oh. disappointing oh that is so <laughs> awesome well ed i'll let you ed you know our resident journalist uh i'll let you do your do your questions to let everybody know See, i always do this it really hates you it. always do this and it's literally like i don't want this to be an interview this is just like a chat and he's like oh it's a journalist <laughs> yeah we do it because it makes you feel awkward every single time so i have to do it yeah so you have to do it on purpose great yeah. thanks yeah well welcome kelsey um <laughs> thank you <laughs> so you work for annapurna which is mm-hmm. a publisher so you work with loads of other smaller developers and help publish their games and for people who aren't familiar, let me just read out some games from the website because these are some mm-hmm. of like the best games from the last few years. You've yep. got What Remains of Edith, Edith Finch, Flower, Gorogoa, Gone Home, Donut County, Florence, Ashen, Outer Wilds, Journey, Telling Lies, Sayonara Wild Hearts, Watam, Kentucky Route Zero, If Bound, Due Process, The Unfinished Swan, I Am Dead, The Pathless, Maquette, Last Stop, 12 Minutes, The Artful Escape, Solar Ash, A Memoir Blue, and most recently, Neon White. Mm -hmm. Like that is an amazing, amazing set of games. Yeah, that's a lot of games when you read them out like that. (laughs) And so many ones that every, like pretty much everybody I know will either know it or play it. Like I cannot, I'm somebody that is terrible at finishing games. Like I'm the worst, but there are just, I don't think there are any of these games where I've played and not finished. Like, that's because they're short, Ben. I know that is because mm. they're short, but they're, they're, <laughs> they grab me all the way through. Even some short games I don't finish. I still haven't finished Resident Evil 3 yet. Uh, but like, you no, know, Edith Finch came out at midnight and I remember 
I was like, oh, I've kind of, that looks interesting. I downloaded it and then played it until like 2 a.m., well, half past 2 or 2 a.m. You know, when I'd completed it, it was just so good. Goragoa Goa. And like the only game, the only mobile game I actually remember playing is Florence. Um, and I played mm. it like three or four years ago. There were lots of similarities to my time, to my life at that time as well. So it yeah. was... That's, that's why <clears throat> I haven't played it. I'm too scared that it's just going to bring up <laughs> emotions that I don't want to touch on yet. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we actually... So with Florence, it is a a, a bite-sized game, but it like touches on so many very real things. And um, <clears throat> I remember we were at a PAX and we were showing Florence was, I think was already out, but we were like showing it so people could sit in these like giant yellow bean bags and just play through Florence. And we've had, oh, I don't even know. I think like during that weekend, we probably had like four people ask for tissues because they were crying. And it's like all people who would come up afterwards and just be like, I'm going through a breakup or I'm going through this and like, oh, this, this game really depressed me, but it was so beautiful. And thank you so much. And it was just like, we had one guy come up <clears throat> and he was like, I'm so sorry, but my wife is crying. Um, do you have anything I could like give her? Do you have any tissues? And we were like, we don't, but I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> like, oh. Our booth is generally so upbeat, but <laughs> Florence like really got to people and me too. Like I went through a breakup during that too and it was just like I don't I can't even play this I had to play it for ratings like I had to record it for ratings but oh that game like really really pulls at your heartstrings mm. yeah. and then there's Watam get around to it at some point <laughs> and, and then, then there's Watam yeah. oh is that how you pronounce it sorry I've been calling yeah. it Watam Watam that is the mm -hmm. like all I remember from that is <clears throat> being a toilet and making a golden poop that was yeah. one of the things I remember <laughs> that's all you need to know you know I played it during no, that... a 24 hour stream and I was like about 10 hours into that and going, am I hallucinating here? <laughs> like, is this real? <laughs> am I even moving forward in this game? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Takahashi is such a personality and that game is just like, I mean, the game is very sweet. It's just about making friends mm. and, um, you know, healing the earth and taking care of one another and just loving each other. And it was such like a, such a simple, but delightful message in that game and it was yeah. silly that yeah. game was silly we need most of the games mm. Mm. and speaking of hallucinating I, I played the artful escape last year on on stream which just has the best soundtrack like yeah. it's such a simple game and then you just button mash to just make music and i'm like this is incredible <laughs> yeah so actually uh so johnny galvatron um who made our, or he and his team made, uh, or part of Beethoven Dinosaur, who's the developer. <clears throat> but Johnny Galvatron was a musician before he was even a developer. And he toured, like, um, I think they opened for Def Leppard, he and his band. I think they're called Johnny and the Galvatrons. Um, but yeah, so he's just like, oh, he's such an amazing person. And if you ever meet him or if you've ever interviewed him, he's like, he is the artful escape. Like when you talk to him, the way he talks and he's so like lively and full of life and humor and laughter. And when you play artful, you're like, oh, this is Johnny. Like this game is Johnny. So that was like a really fun process. What was it like when you first played Sayonara Wild Hearts? Um, so mean? Sayonara Wild Hearts. Oh, is that to me or Ed? Oh, no, to you, Augusta. I know, okay. I know, I know what it means to Ed. I, it's just, I love that There game, are so like... many people who adore okay. that game. <laughs> Me included. Sayonara has a really like soft spot in my heart. Um, so I started at Annapurna in 2017. It was the day after we published What Remains of Edith Finch. Um, and we were seven people. And so with Samogo's game, um, obviously a lot of the Annapurna people have 25 plus years experience in games because they came from Sony, they came from, you know, PlayStation. Um, and for Samogo, I remember I had to do like, we, we all kind of like wear a lot of hats within Annapurna and we all help each other do this. But that game was really special to me, not only just because we got to like, we got to go to Sweden and we got to hang out with Samogo and we did like a release party there. Um, and we had like live performance, which was amazing. But we also did the Apple stage. We were on stage at the Apple keynote in 2019. Um, and so that game just holds such a soft spot in my heart because it took up so much of my life, even though I'm not one of the developers and playing it for ratings. So something we have to do within Annapurna Interactive, now that we've grown, 
um, it's a little bit different, but when we were doing ratings for Samogo's game, I had to play it through and I was the one helping submit it for ratings. And so some of the things that I had to call out and write down are like, there's rainbow vomit. Um, <laughs> there's a sword fight, but no one gets hurt. Mm -hmm. um, there's a kiss. Um, so I had to write down stuff like that. And I'm like, this is a wild industry that like, this is like what I, and like, same with what Tom, like we had to write all the poops oh, really? and again, the rainbow vomit, there's a lot of rainbow vomit. Um, mm. but yeah, so like Samogo's game is, is absolutely incredible. And that team is insanely talented. They have such an eye for aesthetics and an ear for music. And yeah, that, that's a really special game. And they're we um, recently put out a trailer for their next game, mm. Lorelei and the Laser Eyes. So yes, that that's looks their next really one. interesting. It's, yeah, that's got very a sort different. Of, it's almost sort of PS one pixely but black and white kind of vibe to it, which it's looks very, really really cool. I'm very excited for people to to play it. Oh, we don't have a release date for that yet, though. I think yeah. we said it was coming to Switch and Steam in 2023, I believe. Um, but yeah, Sign Our Wild Hearts is such a special special thing. And there was such a huge community around it, which was so amazing. Like I met some people through Twitter. Um, one of them is like head of the Sign Our Wild Hearts Stan account. And he became like our mod on our Twitch and yeah. I've gotten to know him that way. And that's like, um, I think he pops in here, doesn't he? And I remember Dan Sign Our Stan. I remember him in your channel because he, yeah, when I was uh, watching your streams, because I remember you were playing, I think you were playing, was it like the Neon Bartender or something? There was a game you were playing. Oh, yeah. Oh, was it the bar um, Barista? Wait, I probably have it on here. Something. Neon Barista, maybe, or? Something like that. Yeah, it was real. I don't know. What it, but yeah, I remember they been they were in the chat and uh, like, oh, they were yeah huge sayonara fans huge fans they have like a whole discord of people speed racing yeah sayonara and yeah we had cosplayers come at pax like it's such a it, yeah it has like this whole community which is so wonderful to see um and i would play that game over and over and over again it was like the perfect game to just play on a plane or on your phone or you can listen to it all the time the music is incredible yeah, I listened to it just like as a music album. Like I, I yeah. played it a lot, but I just listened to the music constantly. Like this is such a good pop album in its own mm -hmm. right. And then there's a game with it as well. Am I? Yeah, <laughs> we called it like a playable music album. Like that's yeah. kind of what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> so your role at Annapurna is producer. What mm -hmm. does that mean? Like I'm guessing because you work with so many different developers and different games that you know your days must be very different and and very varied i imagine yeah so <laughs> i'm just trying to think of how to describe it so <laughs> um like video game publishing in general i didn't know what it was when i wasn't because i worked in film and tv before this i had no experience in video games at all apart from just being a fan um and we wear a lot of hats so in terms of annapurna interactive we help fund, we help market, we help bring their games out on platforms, we help with ratings, we help with voice casting, we help with getting a writer if they need it. Um, so we kind of want everything to be off the developer's shoulders so they can just focus on making their game, you know? Um, so we wear a lot of hats in terms of like, um, well, especially back when we were only seven people, all of us would play the games and submit it for ratings. All of us would help with casting and reach out to agents and we would help with um, voice sessions. And um, so we do a lot of that kind of creative work too, but, and we have a very close relationship with the developers, but in terms of how we help them, of how like involved we are, we do like to be involved. I think it's because it's a relationship for three plus years that you're working with someone. Um, and we're not a company that's like hands off we're going to fund this game and we'll just step back and let you do your thing. We really like to like be there for you in every way possible and ratings and getting localization. Um, yeah. Finding writers if the developer needs help with writing the script. Um, there's just a lot of different things that go into it that I wasn't aware of before I worked in publishing. Cause I just kind of think of, yeah, they make the game and then they release it. Like, that's, like, what do you mean? That's all it is. Um, but it's like years and years of, of check-ins and build playing and, um, just making sure that the game is on track in terms of schedule and um, yeah, 
I don't even know if I answered that well. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. That you, you absolutely did. Like, it sounds like it's just a really varied and really interesting role and really interesting place to work that you get to work with so many different people across the industry doing different things. Yeah. And we meet so many, obviously these developers are so insanely talented and it's so, it's so wonderful to be able to meet some of the people that create like some of my favorite games that I've ever played. Um, and just like see them work on this game that means so much to them. I, it's just like, yeah, it's a special experience that I didn't realize was happening behind the scenes. Yeah. So what is coming up soon for Annapurna? I know there's a showcase that is in a couple of weeks time. So yes. you don't have to spoil anything. But from what has already not. been announced, <laughs> what's already been announced that like is coming soon. Like what should we be looking out for? Um, well, yeah, the showcase is on July 28th at 12 p.m. PST. Um, and that will be on the Annapurna Interactive Twitch and YouTube. It's 8 um, p.m. We know that now. We we've we're fully uh, versed in the PST to BST uh, conversion rate <laughs> yeah, now exactly. after today. Because <laughs> um, we had one last year and we just really liked it and people seem to really enjoy it. Um, and so we have actually wrote down some of the things. We have, um, well, Neon White was just released, which is Ben Esposito's next game. He did Donut County. Um, and yeah, that was like a hard left from Donut County to to mm. neon white that game mm. is so incredible if you haven't played it do it it's so fun i never thought i'd be a fan of i'm i'm probably not the audience for that game but i played it so much it is addictive yeah. like i will not sleep until i beat my own score and i didn't know i was one of those people but here we are um so neon white just came out we have stray coming out july 19th on playstation and steam um we have Samogo's next game, Lorelei and the Laser Eyes, uh, coming to Switch and Steam in 2023. Um, we announced Cocoon, which is Geometric Interactive's next game, coming to Xbox, Switch, and Steam in 2023. Um, we also have Thirsty Suitors by Outer Loop Game coming out. Yes. Um, and that just won uh, an award at Tribeca, which was really, really cool. But um, yeah, you'll get more information at the showcase in terms of um, some release dates and just like more um just general information of what to look out for yeah i don't want to spoil too much i can't wait for so many of those especially like one of them stray i'm so intrigued that is like you know the cyberpunk game that i need yeah <laughs> and so that was good. actually so it was really funny i i remember seeing um a news or a newspaper what am i uh, <laughs> a magazine not even a magazine what am i saying it was like a not kotaku something like that back in like 2015 or something. And I wasn't working in games. I was like an assistant to a manager um, at a management company. Um, and there was an article about this cat game, this cyberpunk cat game. And I was like, oh my gosh, cats. I love cats. Uh, <laughs> cyberpunk. I love cyberpunk. This is the game for me. And then I didn't real, really hear anything about it. It was just like, these developers are working on this cool cat game. And I was like, whoa. And then I started working at Anapra Interactive and they were like, oh, and then we have this game. And I was like, what? That's the cat <laughs> game that I saw. This oh. is crazy. And I was just like, I was so excited that they they were working on it. I just didn't even know that they were helping publish Blue Twelve's game. Um, so yeah, that was just really funny. And then Journey is like one of my all-time favorite oh. games. And we we ported it. Um, we didn't uh publish the original one. Mm. But um, yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, this they're making all my cats like <laughs> anything with cat. It's like, I love it. I've tweeted this before and mentioned it before, but like it's usually, and I've said this many times in the past, but like when it, whenever I see a game published by Annapurna, I don't know, it just, I always find it something that's kind of a bit unique or a little bit different to the the typical ones, typical games, which I do love as well. But like when it's an Annapurna game that's published, it makes me kind of open my eyes and go, oh, I'm going to give this a go and see what it's like. Because you never know, I might just love it. Where something, something like, yeah, uh, What Remains of Edith Finch was the first ever game that I like people don't yeah uh, I I don't like walking simulator I think somebody referred to it as a stroll play, a stroll playing game uh so I really enjoyed and that was one of the first ones I played and was like this is incredible and actually there's so many games that you can play that will get you into a genre uh we mm -hmm. were talking before we went live about Red Dead Redemption and and that game actually got me into like I was like really interested in westerns for a while uh because I was just so immersed in the world and and the genre and that's what um 
what remains of Edith Finch did for me. When it comes to the showcase, by the way, will will we get to see you again? Because you were on. I'm not going to say anything. Oh, okay. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> oh, okay. You better. <laughs> so in, you all better tune in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just go watch it. Yeah. July 28th. Yeah. And Stray is coming to PS Plus as well, which I'm really excited about because that's one of the kind of few new games that is available on that. So I'm uh, I'm definitely excited to play more of that. Yeah, we're very excited for people to play Blue Twelve's game. Um, yeah, it's a special one. It's been they've obviously been working on it for a very, very, very long time. So um, yeah, exciting that it's finally coming out into the world. <laughs> And what about you and your interest in your interest in gaming? Like, where did that stem from? What games did you did you play as a kid? Oh my gosh! So, I have an older brother, um, and he played a lot of video games when I was really young. I think the first, um, well, no, he had like all the consoles, but the first one that I actually started playing was like Game Boy, Sega. Um, Sega Game Gear that was one we had like in our car at all times with the giant briefcase that it came in it was such a big <laughs> briefcase um, and probably Nintendo and then Nintendo 64 Nintendo 64 I think was like the first console where I really got into gaming and I think it was uh, Zelda it was Ocarina of Time um, <laughs> yeah, I feel say like, that. <laughs> yeah I feel like that was like and I would watch my brother play all the time like he would play just constantly and I would watch him play it and then I would start playing it and um yeah I think that was like one of the biggest ones but we would always go to our friend's house when I was really really young I think I was five or six we would go to our friend's house and at the time we lived in Albany New York um and they had a um a Nintendo so we would play like Lion King and Aladdin uh which was always so exciting and then they uh, then when we moved to the Netherlands, which was the next step, I think I was seven years old. We had, we didn't have a PlayStation, but our friends did. And we would be over there all the time. I think Tekken, we played a lot of Tekken. Um, and that was kind of random. I don't know really why I enjoyed that so much. Cause then I also started playing like dead or alive all the time, which I don't know. That was a weird moment in my life. I don't know why those <laughs> games like stuck to me so hard, but I think it was just like the, the fun that I was having playing games in general was what like, Oh, I really love doing this. And then from then on it carried over, we got the PlayStation two, we got the PlayStation three, we got the four, we got the five. My brother is a big Xbox person. Um, I wasn't a big PC player. Uh, I still don't really play a lot of PC games unless it's like for work. Um, but yeah, I think it, yeah, I think it started on the Nintendo 64. There was another game that I would always play. I never remember the name of this. It's a Nintendo 64 game. It's about, I think, uh, two characters and then a little creature, and it takes place in space. It's like Galaxy, Galaxy something. Even Ed stumped for this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to find it. If anybody in the chat uh, knows which one. Yeah, it like, has I, a, it, it's a weird name. I literally can never remember it. Oh, <laughs> it's coming to me. Who's that? Hold on. <laughs> Jet Force Gemini says Mr. Doubt. Yes, that's it. <gasps> oh my God, it's that. I love Jet that's Force Gemini. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's it. That's so yes, funny. With the little hovering dog. Yes. And that was a game oh. that is like stuck in my mind for so long. I can never rem ever remember the name of it, but I think it's Gemini. Were they twins? Like the two yes. characters? Boy yes. and a girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so we had a Dutch Nintendo 64. And when <laughs> we moved to Germany, we had to have like an adapter for the games and Jet Force Gemini for some reason never worked. It never let me like out past like two levels but i would just play those two levels like all the time <laughs> i've never even finished the game i don't even know what happens in the game but that game like has followed me forever and perfect dark it's perfect really dark hard like the final, I wouldn't the even final know. boss is impossible i never finished it but i, I think, didn't even you know, know there are bosses like yeah, I yeah. <laughs> the game. do you remember like the little teddies that you have to save the sort of teddy no. bear things oh, okay no. so there are these <laughs> teddy bears hidden in the world that you have to save and in order to access the final boss you have to save every single one of those teddies oh so there's gosh. like this mad dash at the end of the game to like 
explore every single level and collect everything before you can finish it. And it's such a pain that I think it's most such a play. like a forced completionist game. Yeah. Like we're gonna make yeah. you do everything in this game. Oh. Yeah, I lo- I love that game from what I saw. I don't know. I need a remake of that game. I really, really want a remake of that. Apparently, the, I just saw like interesting. If there was an IGN uh, article that said that they've renewed their uh, the license for it, but I mean that could be just something that's very standard. Who knows? I hope it's coming. What was that? Was that recent? Uh, it was in oh, no, <laughs> twenty sixteen. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe they're working yeah. on it. Who knows? Yeah, maybe it's coming. <laughs> yeah. It's right around the corner. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> oh. So what do you normally game on? You say console. I'm a PlayStation but... gal. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had PlayStations my whole life and I'm really bad with mouse and key. I've tried practicing. I really want to be able to play shooters mm. mouse and key just because it's such an advantage and it's faster and it looks better. Um, mm. but yeah, I PlayStation is like I've had one, two, three, four, and five, and five was very difficult to get my hands on, but mm-hmm. I ended up snatching one and then shipping it from my parents' house in Michigan to Los Angeles. Um, nice. Yeah, I, I love PlayStation games in general because I think I played Journey for the first time on PlayStation and that game was like the moment for me where I was like, whoa, mm-hmm. I want to work in games. Like this was so special. I I, I remember I like cried during the last scene with um, Austin's music is so incredible in that game. And the idea that you could play a game with no words and yeah. still have that effect on you just like blew me away. Um, it's so but yeah, cool. we're getting off track, but yeah, PlayStation is, is what I'm moan, moanly say only <laughs> and mostly <laughs> moanly play. Oh uh, yeah. That yeah. journey is so good. I was, I was the same as you. Like I only recently started playing more on PC and now when it comes to like, yeah, first person shooters, I have to go for mouse and keyboard. But like the the thing that got me onto mouse and keyboard was getting a mouse that had like some extra buttons on it. So it, it mm. has like kind of the, you've got the speed, you're not looking for the keys and stuff. So the only thing that I ever really use my, like my hand on the keyboard for is, you know, just w- movement with Waz, whereas everything else, all the, like the extra buttons and, you know, the, the buttons to throw a grenade or to attack or to run, whatever, they're all on the, the mouse. And it kind of that. Okay. Maybe I need to do that because my issue is because I'm not, a mouse and key player i just i know where letters are for typing but in terms of like using wasd and like i only know it in a very basic sense just for yeah. work but having like also my fingers just don't stretch that far like mm. i don't know how like people who grew up on mouse and key have like detachable yeah. thumbs or something i just don't know how they do it like the streams i watch a lot of apex streams and the streams where they're just doing hand cam and i'm just watching their fingers they're just like yeah, I'm so jealous. That's all I want. Same, I'm yeah. same PlayStation as, hands. I'm the same as you. I much prefer like just moving with two joysticks just makes so much more sense to me. And again, yeah. when it's like press E to do this and I'm like, hang on, where's E? And yeah, I know exactly I where E is when I'm typing, but like, yeah, exactly. Next to w, I'm like, yeah. where is that? <laughs> and then I'm dead. So it doesn't even yeah. matter. Yeah. Like by the time I look back up from my keyboard, trying to figure out what I'm doing. The thing that got but, me yeah. was destiny because destiny is kind of, yeah. Mm. Wazzed mouse and then maybe like three buttons for your super and your special and whatever and then i just mapped those to some buttons on my mouse and never went back because man i need to look into that then i've never thought about i've got the the g502 the mouse is a really really good one it take at first you're like these are these are in weird places some of these buttons but then it just after a yeah only took it took me about a week to get used to it and you probably won't straight away but yeah when you've got these buttons and you just yeah, it, it's a bit like a controller in the end because then you know exactly where the button is, what it does, where to press it. Mm. That sounds like I could maybe do it. I do have an MMO mouse as well, which I find really difficult to use because it's got, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's got 12 buttons on the side of it. Oh my gosh. And it's, I can't deal with that. It's Yeah, I'm still kind of, I always press the wrong button, but it's... But yeah, um, don't they all, they all feel the same, right? They don't have like, I don't know. Yeah, there, there isn't one. Yeah, no, it's not like on a keyboard where, they, you know, there's like a little ridge on something so you can kind of identify which is the central key or whatever yeah no that one doesn't have anything like that unfortunately oh. so what are you playing at the moment kelsey um yeah we were we were talking earlier i play a lot of apex legends um i feel like 
I never thought I would say this, but it's like probably my favorite game. I never thought I'd be a first person shooter kind of person that was like, what's your favorite game? Like, cause I would be like journey, like those kind of games, which they still are, but I have played apex legends consistently and it has brought me so much joy and stress and anger <laughs> since it came out pretty much. Um, I think like I got my, my, you know, the PlayStation end of year thing where it tells you how many hours the wrap up. <laughs> I got that thing and it was, I think I played 546 hours of Apex in wow. like, I, I think it was COVID. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's probably Apex. And then like some, sometimes I did start playing the new Horizon Zero Dawn when it came out. Um, I'm playing the quarry right now, but I'm not playing it because I play it with my friend whenever he visits. And so I haven't played it since he left. So mm-hmm. hopefully we'll keep going. So yeah, I've been playing the quarry. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn, and then I was replaying Mass Effect when they released the remastered versions. Um, but it's real Mass Effect One is really hard to get through. Oh God, yeah, I it's yeah, I played. I've never played the original, um, and then the remaster came out, and I played through the first, and I was like, oh, the controls oh. are better in the second, and luckily they are. The controls but... <laughs> make no sense no. in the first one. I was like, why? What do you mean this is reload? Like, why is this yeah. button reload? Like, mm. I I didn't play the first one either. I I got hooked on Mass Effect from the second one, mm. um, and so when they came out with the remaster with the first one, I was like, oof, this is uh, yeah, the controller, and it's one of those games where if you don't play it for a while and come back to it, you don't remember what the controls are, so. Mm because it's not like a universal kind of system for the controls so i'm always like i feel like i'm backtracking every time i pick it back up i just want to get to two because that oh that's that's such a special game one is quite short though because i i love one and i know Mm. a lot of people don't but i just love the story of one and and the story is great yeah yeah Yeah, two was where i started and then i went back and played one and was like oh no i love this one um Mm. and i again like like you both played the um the remastered version and I whipped through one in about 10 hours or something. And I was like, I thought this was a really long RPG, mm-hmm. but it's not. If you just, if you mainline the main missions, you can whip through it quickly and then you can get mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. So just rush it. You'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. I started great. two and it's like, yeah, this is a much, much better game. Yeah. 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 It The controls just make more sense in that game. Well, yeah. Yeah. It just makes more sense to me. Yeah. Still not super intuitive, but mm-hmm. it still makes more sense. I, I, but um, but yeah. Yeah, I do wish Apex. games were a bit more kind of standardized with their controls. I was, I've been playing and absolutely loving Monster Hunter at the moment, but isn't the wrong isn't the run button like R one from what I remember? Yes. Yeah, like yep. the equivalent of R one to run. Like, like, why isn't it R three? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like literally, every, so many other games. Yeah, you push in L three or whatever, and it runs. Like, just keep us some. Yeah. Because then it'll stop me going back to a game. To be honest, sometimes if the gate if the controls are really obscure, I'm like, oh, I don't really have the time to kind of relearn everything again um yeah I'm definitely. Actually, i quite like that with elden ring elden ring i will go back to at some point and play more of but that's one of those games that i do feel like it's although scrolling through the various items you've got and then pressing like square i think it is to use it or some i don't know I, oh the menu that, system in that game is appalling that is annoying it's oh, you absolutely just, appalling yeah don't you press is pressing down on the d-pad like using the consumable or is it switching to the next one i can never remember it's, it's switching between them yeah. and then you press square to use the amount of times i've had a fight in elden ring and like unequipped my sword and just started punch, <laughs> punching the person and being like oh crap what's happened here because if you press that right was on like the... in red dead too as well yeah. like you'd accidentally shoot someone in the face because you were like the same button was like i think r2 was bring out the gun but r2 is also shoot and sometimes mm. it would just do both and i'm like i'm so sorry i don't want to be an outlaw that wasn't meant to be the whole like yeah. situation but yeah i i like accidentally it was a lot of shopkeepers that oh. i like accidentally <laughs> killed yeah. no <laughs> i like, remember because isn't something like when you're going past somebody on a horse like r2 is or whatever it is to like nod your head and to like greet yeah. them but if you've got so your weapon out like yeah <laughs> if you've got your weapon out r2 is yeah shoot and murder them in cold blood so it's like yeah it's a fine line they must have done that on purpose yeah and then they you're like immediately on the run you're like no i have to do a quest here now i have to run away for a while and hide and pay off my bounty yeah <laughs> yeah but that game is perfect just to be clear i love that game it really is that was like one of the news things that came out about the fact that they apparently ditched a Red Dead Redemption remake as well as a GTA. F- was it San Andreas or four? Or is that the same thing? I can four. Know. four. They yeah. are different, yeah. They are different. I, 
Yeah, they're focusing mm. on no, GTA 6 for now. Oh, wow. Mm. I haven't played uh, a GTA since... Was there a Miami? Oh, yes, Vice City. Vice City. Yeah, I think the that was the one. last one I... Yeah, yeah, that's that the, was the last that's one. That's the I best played. one. It's so that's good. the best one. I really enjoyed I would just ride five. around the scooter. Mm. GTA Listening to all good. the 80s tunes. Yeah. <laughs> and just try to be a really good driver. That was like my version of GTA. I did the taxi <laughs> missions during that. And I was like, really? Yeah, those are fun. Driving people's around with like amazing tunes on. I was like, yep, I'm happy with this. Do remember the Wasn't G- there, there was another taxi game. Crazy Taxi or Driver? Crazy Taxi? Driver. Maybe, maybe Crazy Taxi. I like I those games are so fun when you just want to like I mean Crazy Taxi kind of like makes you be a little crazy but like I really love just following the rules and stopping at the lights and dropping someone off and then like I don't know. I used to They're love, kind of simulators I guess if you Yeah, I used to love Driver. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember Driver like on the San Francisco streets and you just go flying over the mm-hmm. drive and Driver 2. I didn't play it, but I remember. Smashed it. through all the boxes. Oh, it was great. Yeah. So, what have you been playing, man? Uh, this I haven't really been playing too much. I've just been playing more Monster Hunter. I finally got into Sunbreak. Um, and yeah, still really enjoying it. I'm, I'm somebody that will play like three or four hunts and go, okay, that's enough for me. Um, I've never but, played it. It's brilliant. It is a. It's, it's just a really addictive game. If you like a kind of a grindy game where you're, but there's enough variety to keep you excited and you're always making progress. It is one of those perfect games. And it is enough as a, enough of a challenge to really like, yeah, there are t- certain points where you need help or you need to call someone in to help. And, mm. and it definitely rewards cooperative behavior and like in, uh, inviting strangers or just going out on a hunt with a stranger or with three others, uh, which I really like that as well. Because I'm, I like, multiplayer games but i also love multiplayer games where i don't need to speak to the other people which is yeah. apex what i one of the reasons why i loved apex as well when it came out the pinging yes yeah that was like mm. so um in the office again back when we were like seven people we would always try to play like the new games that are coming out because obviously um same in movie or same in any industry really like the world is small like you know everyone um, and you want to try everything and like same if you work in movies you want to try to watch all the movies mm-hmm. so in games we could always get really excited when new games came out and when PUBG was released that was a huge thing in our office everyone was playing it all the time I never really got into it but I loved watching them play and then uh, I think was it next blackout that came out um, we would play that the Call of Duty one, and that was pretty fun. I would just hide under the bridge in the water the whole time and just oh. wait for the circle to go down. Which was that was. But then when Warzone, Apex came out, what was that Warzone or? Uh, I, I think remember. so. It was it was whatever one they released with their first um, battle royale. Oh yeah, was blackout. Yeah, and like that was really fun, and I was like, oh, this is fun, and then. When Apex came out, I was like, this is my jam. At first I was watching, I was like, I don't even know what's happening here, but this looks wacky. But then I think one of the reasons why I stuck with it was because I didn't have to use my mic. Cause like, I'm sure a lot of people can relate. If you're of a certain gender, or if you identify a certain way, you are probably going to get screamed at or said, you know, told nasty things. And even if you're carrying your squad, they're still gonna like be mad at you for some reason. Um, and with Apex, I was like, great, I don't need to talk. I can just communicate with my teammates and I don't ever need to use my mic. Um, and I think now that I've gotten better at the game, I am not great, but I'm better than I was. Mm-hmm. I think now I'm more confident using my mic. And then if they do something nasty, I just mute them. But honestly, with Apex, at least on console, in console lobbies, I've probably only had a bad experience with someone maybe like three times. Um, and mostly it was just them being really mad that I wasn't resing them on the spot or a little kid that was like being racist for absolutely no reason. Like, it's just like, like that kind of stuff. But in general, I don't think I've had like a really bad experience playing apex, but maybe I've just gotten lucky, but I do play it a lot. So I don't know. I think apex has a slightly more diverse and inclusive audience of people playing it. And I think that's partly because of the. Um, the characters you play as are much more diverse and they've really pushed that and I think that that's really impacted the audience and the people playing it who's your main so season one through like season six I was lifeline Uh, in fact my online friend who I've never met who I met through the apex community sent me this one year 
So like my little lifeline. Um, <clears throat> but uh, now I feel like I don't really main anyone. I kind of just play whoever makes sense in the squad that I'm going to play on. But I went through a Bangalore phase for a while. I've been playing a lot of Loba. Um, and then I probably, the most that I played, I've Lifeline and Wraith were like the two that I probably played the most. And the one that I'm worst at is Pathfinder. I have so mm. much respect for players who play Pathfinder because they're just, their movement is another level. And I cannot for the life of me figure out his grapple. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm so bad at it. But yeah, I've like a lot of Loba lately, but her bracelet is still broken. So I haven't played it in so long. I was, yeah, I was Mirage for ages just because I got a skin that was like, uh, yeah, the yellow one, the yellow one that was really hot. And I was like, I'm going to play as, I'm going to learn to play as this guy just so I can use this. Uh, he's fun. Yes. He's fun to play. And he yeah. tricks people. It just, and it annoys yeah. people because you trick them. And that to me is great. Yeah. You send out yeah. one of your uh, Bamboozles. decoys. Yeah. You send mm -hmm. a decoy out that gets shot. <clears throat> you know where they are. You can kill them. It's, it's, it's so fun. Really and good. the the voice lines for Mirage are really funny. Like yeah. I like his character a lot. Same. I also but loved yeah. um, Bloodhound as well, where you can sense <gasps> yeah. where they are and follow their tracks. Yeah, the scanner. Yeah, they've had like, I mean, I don't know when the last time you played, but they've added a lot of characters since then. You know what I'm going to do tonight, don't you? I'm going to download it again. <laughs> Here we go. Oh my gosh, yeah. you should. Here we go. <laughs> Another game. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many of these yeah, live services games or MMO games. I need to play, like, yeah, Final Fantasy 14, Destiny. I love Destiny. And I mean, if it's just there on the desktop, you know, it's there's no harm there every now and again just going into it yeah, and it's having fine. a game yeah but you can always hit me up if you need a buddy and you have no one else in your your squad unless you've got I'm like probably a, on i suppose unless you've got like kind of a, a win percentage you want to kind of keep high then it might be a bad idea <laughs> mm, so. nah, i'm fine <laughs> i don't even look at those numbers i like i honestly just play for fun i was i didn't play at all this rank split because it was on a map that i really hated storm point but now it's on world's edge the second split and world's edge is fantastic so i mean i, I yeah. loved it and i got into apex and i played a lot of it uh when it first came out but it, one of the reasons was that i just adore titanfall 2 it's one of my favorite games of all time i've never played it it's that was one my brother he mm. was like kels you have to play titanfall 2 it's such a cool world it's such a great game and i think it was only on xbox uh for a while or the first one was it was an xbox game mm. and i didn't have an xbox and i was like well i'm never gonna play this game um it's on PC, right? Or it's no? on yeah, everything. It's yeah. on like everything now, yeah. I played right, it. So now I have no excuse. I played the yeah. sequel when it was on PlayStation. I remember like starting it about 9 a.m. on a Saturday or whatever. I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to give this game a go. And I played it like to its completion at about, it was only about five hours, but every level is just something unique. It's got its own unique style or it's got its unique uh, hook to it. Um, mm. Every level just feels like it could have been expanded on to be a separate game um it was yeah i've heard great that. things about that game and the universe like in general like i have a lot of the apex people who are like diehard titanfall people are like oh my god this is crazy this line they're referring <laughs> to this in the game and i'm like i i just don't know what you're talking about <laughs> but it, it's probably cool to weave it all together it is yeah it's such a I, one of the games that yeah and i went and then immediately got into multiplayer and that was one of the first games that i started playing a lot of multiplayer in it was uh just yeah it's fun such a fun game there is a game that i recently started playing called cat cafe manager you played an, this i recognize the name and i know people who have played it and love it i it feel like a lot of people so in chat cute. are going to be into that <laughs> it's so cute and it's literally exactly what the title says you are managing a cat cafe and you just grow it and you have people come visit and there are like witches and you can go get different potions and you can upgrade things and it's just cats and witches like it's just, it was, it's such a freaking cute game. I haven't played it in a while because it's on PC and I generally just like stay um, on my gaming laptop for work. But um, yeah, it's such a cute game. I need to play more of it. And it's on offer now on Steam. So if anybody wants to get it, and it's got very yeah. positive reviews. If you and just want a really relaxing game, like it's a fun game. Oh, it's on Switch. Mm. Oh my gosh. I have a Switch. I rarely touch my Switch. <gasps> So, now you've got an I know. excuse. I and know. Monster Hunter Rise as well. Oh my gosh, there's so many games now. There's another game. So I'm on TikTok a lot, like an embarrassing amount of time. And uh, there was this one woman who was showing like upcoming cute, chill games. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to know about all these games. And one of them she talked about was Bear and Breakfast. 
which is you're a bear in a forest and you manage a bed and breakfast. And I was like, this seems perfect. Was that on the... So I feel like a did, bear and breakfast. Did you watch the showcase of the cute and cozy games? What it was? The, whole, the wholesome direct. Yes. No, but I uh, I saw like tweets about it after and I like wrote down a <laughs> bunch of games that they had mentioned because those are the games that like... It was... You just, when you unplug, like Haunted Chocolatier. Yes. Yeah. Right. It was the yeah. mini like yes. witches, frogs, and cats. That was like witches, the... yes, that's what everyone loves. Witches yeah. and frogs mm. in in life cats, cats yeah. are huge. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just like psych and bear is my favorite animal, so I'm very excited for this bear and breakfast. Yeah, but um, there's another one. I've yeah. forgotten what it's called, but it's kind of like Spirited Away. So you're you're managing like a bathhouse. Oh my god. With gosh. a kind of pixel style, um, and I can't remember what it's called, but I'm gonna look it up. It does Is sound it so good. Mineko's Night Market? Uh, Spirity. <laughs> oh, wow, There's with the name as well. Spirit and tea, but together, Spirity. Oh. This is the it's... problem. Now I'm going to have like 18 games like, <laughs> that I have to play. <laughs> spirit tea. How do you spell Spirit tea? So, Spirit yep. and tea, like the drink tea, but all oh. as one. Word. Oh, okay. I was writing just like tea, like t shirt, and I was yeah, like, me nothing too. is popping up <laughs> except Spirit Airlines. Oh, with double T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just getting spirited away. Like, no. Oh, yeah, that does look. Oh, that is very. Oh, kind yeah. Of... This looks cute. Stardew Valley. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Big fan of Stardew, too. Went through. I remember at PAX, we were playing so much Stardew. Like we were doing the, the online one um, at our booth. And that game is just, oh, my gosh, it's so satisfying. The, it's just it was. Stardew Valley, it's so annoying because the amount of times that you want to just get rid of your farm and start afresh and make like a new thing because you saw a really cool layout someone else posted is very frustrating. <laughs> like, why didn't, why can't I make my farm look like that? That's like Animal it? Crossing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I went through a big Animal Crossing phase during quarantine, as I'm sure. Same. Probably everyone <laughs> yep. did. Yeah. yeah. And I would play with like my friend who lives in Germany and we would like walk around together, but I haven't really played. All the only other times I've, watched animal crossing was with ben's twitch mm. i'm about two thousand hours into that and that's uh, insane that, yeah <laughs> the burnout the burnout is definitely has definitely hit maybe oh it'll my gosh. come back at some point but yeah it's um yeah two thousand hours is a lot to play of a game <laughs> that's insane yeah. i mean not the amount of hours just like that it's animal crossing yeah, it doesn't really surprise me just because people. I mean, it's an adorable game. It's so fun, and the fact that you can like play with friends is so wholesome and sweet. Yeah, um, and it just came out at the perfect time when everyone was yeah. stuck at home. Yeah, like absolutely. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Um, what about you, Ed? What have you been playing? Uh, like you, more Monster Hunter, which we won't dwell on anymore. <laughs> um, I. Uh, <laughs> I also, uh, on stream this week, was playing some Sonic Origins um, mm. and and reliving my childhood on the old Mega Drive slash Genesis for the American Oh, folk. my gosh. Um, and, yeah, Sonic Sonic was just my thing. It was my first love. I just loved, loved, loved Sonic. And it's been a long time since I've played the old Mega Drive games. Yeah, I can tell. It turns out, <laughs> it turns out it's shit. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Sonic One is not a good game. Um, like Green Hill Zone is iconic and it's amazing. Every other level, it's like it punishes you for going fast. Oh. It's mm. the, and I know I sound like Ben saying Mario Kart punishes you for being good. It does, but like Sonic <laughs> punishes you for for going fast. You'll be going really fast, and then it's like, oh, here's some spikes. Oh, here are some enemies. Oh, here's like a platform platforming bit you have to do really slowly. Like, no, I just want to run fast. I just want to go what, fast. What that's all Sonic wants to do too. Mm. Exactly. So yeah. I know that I know when two or three got a lot better. So I'm looking forward to playing those next. But yeah, one one is not a good game. I'm really disappointed. The the eight year old yeah. in me is is crying. But as an eight year old, did you think it was like one of the best games ever? Yeah. Mm. And that's what matters. Absolutely. You know, mm. like it was yeah. a game of its time, mm. and it made like young Ed very very happy. Mm. <laughs> very much yes i found oh no go for it 
I was going to say, I've, I've written a little thing for Eurogamer that will be out tomorrow um, about Sonic, and I've included a picture of me as a kid with my Sonic t-shirt and my Sonic socks. Aww. It is adorable. Such a huge so, fan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and did you That's say how so awful sweet. Sonic is? And gosh, you're going to get some hate if you say that, you know. <laughs> You'll see. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, when I, I was like, my parents live in Michigan, <clears throat> and when I was home in Michigan, I was like, do you guys have like all of our old Game Boy games and Game Gear games and everything. And they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know. Just go down into the basement and dig through things. And I found them. Mm -hmm. I found all of our Game Gear games and I ordered the analog. I'm in like, I think mine comes next year, but I get to play all the Game Gear games that we have. And I'm so excited. I'm, I'm very nervous because I'm sure they're going to be bad, but in my head, mm -hmm. they were so fun. Like on every road trip on our, like on our Game Gear, we would play those. But I found my um, Game Boy Mary Kate and Ashley get a clue game. And that game, like, had, oh my gosh, it was such a special game uh, when I was little. And I cannot wait to be able to play it again. I don't know if anyone remembers that game. But um, yeah, it was Mary Kate and Ashley get a clue Game Boy game. And they were just detectives and you had to go through like the tech stuff. I don't know. <laughs> it's probably going to be so bad. I kind of like, should I play it because it's gonna dampen my memory of it like Sonic did with you but I I'm Should pretty excited stream it I hope I get it I feel like the analog is such a foreign far away thing that like when is it coming I don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh well how many Mary Kate and Ashley games were there because I, I feel like there's just so many I have no idea I only had I only had the the Game Boy game I think it was Game Boy Color um or was it no yeah it must have been game boy color because then i found all of our pokemon game boy color games mm -hmm. oh and i have them all in like my closet along with all of my other gaming consoles that i can't use anymore because they're german or dutch or <laughs> whatever so they're just like all in my closet mm -hmm. but um yeah i'm i'm really excited to like get back to those really old games that i haven't played there was one game so again when i was home my dad was talking about how uh, my brother really wanted this game um, when he was younger and it was for the Sega Game Gear. And it was, I don't remember what game it was, but my dad ended up buying him a different game. And it was the dolphin game that was like Echo. It was Echo, like impossible. Yeah. It was yep. impossible to beat. So and hard. So my hard. dad, like he got so sad telling the story. He like remembers it so well. He was like, Kelsey, when I tell you the disappointment in your brother's eyes, when he was expecting a different game and I gave him Dolphin <laughs> or Echo, I will never forget <laughs> that moment. Like it crushed my brother. <laughs> and I was just like, it's so funny, the memories that are associated with video games. Cause like, <laughs> I remember my brother playing Echo and he was just like this game, you can't beat it. It's like impossible. It's so hard. <laughs> and he was so frustrated with this stupid Dolphin game. And I couldn't beat it either, but I, it's so random. Like the, the games that just kind of stick in your mind, even though you've never touched them again. I haven't seen that game since I was, I don't know, like six or seven, but for some reason I remember Echo and <laughs> Jet Force Gemini and like games that, oh my gosh, this is totally random. One of my favorite games probably of Nintendo 64 was Battle Tanks 2. Battle Tanks oh. 2, did you ever play that? no oh my god it was multiplayer that game was so much fun i literally can hear the voice she goes battle tanks and that was like the beginning of it and you got to choose your tank and i always chose the little guy that died really quickly but he was super super speedy and you just battled other tanks it was the most fun game especially because it was like couch co-op which you don't really get a lot of these days yeah, there's not enough of that now oh. i know i've it's sad like when the quarry came out it's one of those games where like you can kind of sit with someone and kind of play it, even though it's single player, you guys can both experience the game, but there's not a lot of couch co-op, which is a bummer. Overcooked, like Overcooked was a mm. blast. But again, I don't know if it's because it was really fun, which it was, but also that I could do a couch co-op and I could play with my friend, not like online multiplayer, but they can actually play yeah. with me here. I feel like Switch tries to do that a lot because like I play a lot of like Mario Party and stuff, but. Yeah, we went to the Waz, um, which is like the uh, kind of games um, 
More convention. Controller. Yeah, games games convention. And they were the like the games that we had the most fun with. We played Kiwi. Do you know Kiwi? Mm-mm. You play like a Kiwi, but two Kiwis. And uh, oh but it's spelled like key is in like the lock. Uh, so K E Y and then W E. And oh. yeah, and that's a that was a really <clears throat> cool court game that we played. And then there was another one. What was the house one? It was like a moving out or something like that. No. Oh, moving out. Yeah, well, yeah. there is, there is moving out, but it was another one we played where you've got to like rob a house and then steal stuff from it. Oh, yes, but oh. Very, 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 very similar vibe to moving out. Okay, and that those I couldn't two... get into moving out. No, this mm. one was great because I think I figured out the controls before Ed did, and it really upset him. So I yes, <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Yes, Kiwi, oh, someone in your chat said or chat said Untitled Goose Game. Is that a what a cute game. Is there a co-op in that? I have no idea. I didn't play I didn't realize it, it was co-op either. Mm. I enjoyed it for a bit. Maybe they're just talking about a great game, like mm. a super fun game, because yes. Oh, there is apparently. Oh my gosh. Oh, nice. oh. I did not even know that. <laughs> <clears throat> I do love uh-huh. a co-op game. And that, well, I mean, straight after this stream, we're going to be playing some uh, Power Wash Simulator. Well, not straight after the stream, but oh. after the podcast, we'll Power Wash Simulator. Cause... Oh my gosh. Those simulators are so fun. Yeah, it's I've, so I think I've... I tried to play um, American Truck Simulator because my coworker, Jeff, who runs the AI Twitter account and who has the best tweets and saves them all for the Annapurna Interactive Twitter, um, he is a massive simulator uh, player. And he started playing American Truck Simulator. And he also streams on the AI account sometimes, um, oh. that game. <clears throat> and then I could not for the life of me figure out how to drive. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know why. Same with the flight simulator. I was like, is everyone just like a really good pilot? Because I couldn't, and also it might be because I'm just not a, a keyboard player, but I could not for the, I got so frustrated playing those games. Cause I was like, I just want to get on the road and drive, but I couldn't even get out of the parking lot with my truck. <laughs> so I would back into everything. <laughs> but when I was watching Jeff play, it's so satisfying and chill. And you're just like watching the scenery and driving your truck and the only one that I really got into was obviously power washing because mm. that's the best. And then, yeah. um, and it can take like two hours door. sometimes and you do like two hours, you're cleaning up something on power wash simulator and it's taking two hours and it's like, that was a great two hours spent you it's know, just, just cleaning this calming. playground. Yeah. 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 It's like really, really nice. I follow this girl on TikTok who, um, power washes really old tombstones and graves and i love that account so much because she like researches the person and then tells you about how they died and where they came from and then she power washes these really old tombstones and it is just there's something about power washing that is universally loved (laughs) like no one can get mad at a power washing video (laughs) yeah i was at i was at ed's and i was i think went to the bathroom and came back and i hear this like spraying sound and i'm like what's going on and i went into the living room and you uh (laughs) And you were watching somebody cleaning a rug and you sat for like 20 oh, minutes. Yeah. Watching Those someone... are really good. <laughs> yeah. And it's literally like this black rug and it comes out and it's bright red. And you're like, yeah. what oh. was living in yeah. that? But they're like scrubbing it and soaping it. And this it's weirdly satisfying. Yeah. I kind of want to know like why at that point did the person finally say, okay, I got to get this rug cleaned. <laughs> like, like you can't like remember back in the day, like, oh my gosh, when I bought this, it was so beautiful and vibrant mm. and now it's black. Like it, <laughs> that's years and years of buildup. I also wonder what happens to those rugs after they wash it. Do they resell it or does it go back to the person? Mm. Well, yeah, I don't know. Like, did they, did they find it in like an old country house that hasn't been lived in for years? So they just I found so. it, but like, or is it someone owns it and wanted it clean for themselves? Like, they never give you that. You have to just imagine imagine the backstory of the rug. I wish we knew. So <laughs> the, the backstory of these rugs. I've just I would um, love to know that. had a yeah, I had a quick Google. Uh there are a couple of others oh, deep power deep washing simulator and carpet cleaner. Um <gasps> there you go. So that is potentially Oh my gosh. All these cleaner. games that already exist, but I didn't even know. You need a carpet mm. cleaning simulator. <laughs> also, power wash is coming out of early access very soon i think it's this month and it's being added to game pass as well <clears throat> so Day if one. you want to play it you can play it on game pass hmm. yeah because because you said you, you've got a playstation playstation 5 have you got any of the new xbox consoles nope 
Uh, no, I don't have any Xbox. I would. I I would really like to have an Xbox because there are like obviously games on Xbox that I would really like to play, but I just didn't want to buy another console to have. Yeah. Um, but I would definitely, I'm very interested in the new one. It just took me so long to get the PS5. I was like worn out of getting <laughs> consoles. <laughs> like Same. It, I spent yeah, like three cool. months. I was like in Michigan, just having every alert on that I yep. could find on Twitter, like everywhere. And every time I would get in the digital line, by the time I got through, it was sold out. And like, I'd have my sister on my laptop and me on my phone and like mm-hmm. all my, like my family members <laughs> trying to help me. And then one time I managed to get through on the PlayStation website. And for a while I was just like, I feel like it's gonna, my order's just going to get canceled or something or something bad's going to happen, but yeah. I got it. I didn't even care which one it was. I was like, I'll just take, I wanted the digital one, but I was like, I don't care. I'll take whatever I can get. I was like that with it's my, great. I was like that with my series X. I ended up buying a bundle with that and a really ugly t-shirt that what didn't even fit me. So I was like, I don't care. <laughs> I had to get yeah. that bundle. Yeah. I think I'd like yeah, it. I'll just, I'll just take whatever I can get. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I would really like an Xbox. There are some yeah. amazing games on Xbox that I really want to play. And I think it's the only place where you can play Red Dead Redemption. Cause I know you're a fan of Red Dead Redemption, the original yeah. with the 4k graphics or like the 4k. Uh. Uh, yeah assets okay so now i have to get an xbox <laughs> and i also have to buy all these games that we were talking about yeah yeah you're gonna regret you're gonna regret coming on here <laughs> yeah i'll be like guys i spent six hundred dollars because of you <laughs> <laughs> who do i bill it to yeah oh uh, well thank you so so much for joining us um for swapping joysticks yeah. it's been i can't believe that's been over an hour <laughs> mm. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it was really, really nice to finally get to talk to you and actually like see your face and interact with you because I've I feel like we've been online friends for a while and yeah. Ed, it was so nice to meet you. Um, yeah, likewise. Yeah, and I hope I hope people uh, are playing Neon White. Yes, that we will be giving away. We will. Thank you. Thanks very much to Kelsey. We we are going to be giving away four copies of it. Two on Steam and two on Switch. One a US Switch code and one a, a Europe Switch code as well. So thank you so much for that. Yeah. Yeah. I hope I hope you enjoy. And obviously reach out to me with any other things you might ever need. We're happy to to give stuff to your community. And um, yeah, you've you've always been such a big supporter of AI. So we're very thankful. We love it. We love AI. Really do. Like literally when Ed was reading out those games earlier, I'm like, God. <laughs> like even I've been reminded, I'm like, yep. these are so good. Like there's so many yeah. great games. Oh, so um, yeah, Kelsey, and your chat is so nice too. They are lovely. Yeah, don't tell them that they get. You know. Oh, sorry. No, get your chat's really awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, where can we find you then, Kelsey? Where can people find you? Um, I'm on Twitter. Uh, I think it's not Jean Grey, like mm. X Men. Um, but honestly, I'm mostly on TikTok. To be honest, I'm only 50 people away from 10k. <gasps> Wait, let me go and follow you because I, oh, I have the TikTok. People. Let's everyone yeah. right get your TikToks. I, uh, <laughs> I need to 50 keep using people it. Away. I think I'm underscore not Jean Grey underscore. Okay. Oh, I need to. I need. It wants me to sync my Facebook friends. I don't think I have friends on Facebook. Let me go. Where is it? Uh. <laughs> Oh. oh, it's on my it's on my Twitter too in my bio. Oh shit! No, <laughs> uh, I hate that oh it auto gosh. plays. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that is one. Yeah, it's in my Twitter bio too. You can see like my stuff in there. What was it but again? Yeah, sorry. Underscore. Oh, yeah. Underscore not Jean Gray. Underscore. There we go. I will make sure because yeah, I've got. Um, I need to go and actually do some more uh, TikToks because I did it for quite a while. There we go. You've They're got... fun. They're so fun. Yeah. It's one of those as well. You look at, you open up TikTok, and then an hour later, you're yeah. It, then you kept but you like up, yeah. You it, like some of them are just so funny and creative, and so like the app is so interesting because some of it is like so wonderful, and then another part is just trash fire. But yeah. the stuff that makes me laugh so hard, I'm just like this app is so wonderful, and like kids now are so freaking creative and and have such an imagination it's so fun watching some of these but mm. i think i'm on it too much <laughs> yeah no i i have definitely been addicted to it i remember like scheduling three posts per day at certain times and things and then i was like no i need to take a step back because i'm getting a bit addicted to this so, yeah. oh my gosh i need to follow you too i've given you a follow i promise i will put some stuff up there because I'm really it's hoping been a while, to get in. Uh, yeah, it has. I'm really hoping to get into community management with uh, in the video games industry, and I think you know, being 
more active on TikTok and aware of everything would definitely help. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah. For just for tips for people trying to get into the video game industry, Twitter is where it's at. They, we have a lot, they're always job postings on Twitter and DM people that you really like and just like shoot your shot. Mm. Um, yeah. Like that's how, yeah. Thanks. No, that was a question. A lot of people from there. That was a question I was meant to ask. <laughs> like, thank you for answering it before I, like, without me. With me forgetting and asking it but yeah so people wanting to get if there is anybody getting into the gaming industry you would say twitter is the way to go twitter is a really good spot like all our developers post um job openings like on dev teams through twitter and then link to their website or just follow like follow anyone follow the publishers follow the people who work at the publishers and just like i don't like dm them and be like hey you have any job openings just like you know we're big fans of nothing is impossible at Annapurna Interactive. So mm. just like shoot your shot, you never know might come. But yeah, I think Twitter is probably the best place for job postings for games, which is very different from film. That's something I, I wasn't aware of, but yeah, Twitter. Brilliant. Ed, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Ed underscore Knights with an N. Excellent. And I'm Biggest Benis everywhere except Twitter. I'm Biggest Benis one. Because one day that person who hasn't logged in in 13 years will decide to uh, deactivate his account. I'm still living on that hope. Um, <laughs> but you can also find us at swappingjoysticks.com. And uh, yes, there will be the uh, little icon added to swappingjoysticks.com where you can find us on Spotify. And I know it's not called iTunes anymore, is it? Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts. Yeah, if you go to Apple Podcasts or to Spotify and just type in swapping joysticks, um, it you will find us. And if you type it in on Google with Safe Search Off, you'll get some filth. So... You get mm. everything oh. you could possibly want. <laughs> All right. right. Thank you very, very much for joining us, Kelsey and Ed. Yes, and I hope thanks, we, um, I hope you will join us again sometime. Yeah, I have this. so much fun at TwitchCon. And thank you so much for having me. I'm definitely going to watch uh, more of the episodes now. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having me. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. You too. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye, Kelsey.